Mariner! Mariner! Uh, I'm okay. It's just a fracture. Uh, just? Oh, God, I can't even look at it! Hello again. It's time for another Star Trek Lower Decks review. We are pretty late this time because, well, same reason as last week, actually. I am currently struggling with some mental health issues and have not been able to put out content as fast as I would like to. As a result, this will just be a shorter video, but I wanted to at least get a video out before the next episode came out. And yeah, let's just get right on to it, the non-spoiler section. So this episode is called Where Pleasant Fountains Lie, and it was billed as the return of Jeffrey Combs to Star Trek, who of course has played various characters throughout the Star Trek canon. And he's delightful. He plays an evil computer, and I, I love evil computers in Star Trek. That's a classic uh, trope that's always fun to see revisited. There's also an additional B-plot B about Billups and his history, which was fun, because we don't really know that much about the expanded cast outside the main Lower Deckers. So, yeah, I was really pumped for this week's episode, and it was funny. It was very funny. It was a very strong episode. Like, it's not one of the best episodes of the series, but it's a very, very, very strong episode. And the jokes land, it has a lot of fun little in-jokes as they always do. There's, you know, actual tension and character development. We get to see a lot of really interesting takes on um, Boimler this week, actually. Which was refreshing, to be perfectly honest. And yeah, I just really dug it. It was cool. And, you know, it also has some... Loose queer rep. We will talk about that in details during the uh, spoiler section. But yeah, I enjoyed the episode. It was fun. Let's just dive into spoilers. So this week we have an A plot following this evil computer that Mariner and Boimler need to return to the Daystrom Institute in Okinawa to put it there alongside all the other evil computers. And it's voiced by Jeffrey Coombs and he just tries to manipulate Boimler and Mariner into betraying each other, they end up crashing on a planet, and you know, have to like find a way to get the distress call out and get help. And um, the. Uh, I don't remember the actual name of the computer, so it's just Jeffrey Combs for me. Um, and he's like, oh, Mariner is the reason you're on this assignment instead of the other more exciting assignment, because she doesn't think you're ready, and it's like manipulating him. and. It like goes so far that Boimler actually like shoots Mariner with uh, the stun setting on his phaser to plug in the computer and there's a really cool twist because turns out no, Boimler was playing along. He was playing in the computer and even Mariner didn't realize this. Boimler was the smart one. Boimler was the bold one. That was really cool. I liked that. So, you know, they managed to get a distress call out and get the computer to the Daystrom Institute, which it was fun seeing that in animated form, considering we've only really seen it in um, Star Trek Picard. It actually is a uh, regular location in the Star Trek Picard novel, The Last Best Hope. And that's a really good novel. If you haven't uh, read it or listened to the audiobook, you should. But yeah, it was fun. It was a great little A-plot. It was nice seeing Boimler actually being the cool one for once. Even if I, you know, still like Mariner more and I expect Mariner to be the cool one, you know, we need to play things up and, like, change things up, because otherwise it will just get stale. So the B-plot is about Billups, who is apparently the prince of a planet. And, like, it's like the spacefaring humanoid race, but they treat everything technological as if it's magic so it's like all this like fantasy themes going on they like uh, talk about their ship as if it's like you know powered by you know magic cauldrons and stuff like this and basically it's his mother the queen who is like oh we're having troubles with our something in the ship uh, I need you Billups to use your engineering skills and come fix it and Bill is like, my mom is trying to make me, you know, take my place as the heir uh, to the throne. Which apparently is done by him losing his virginity. 
if he loses his virginity, he is legally the new king of this planet. So his, his mom apparently just tried to get him to have sex. And this is, I mentioned that this, this has some loose queer rip. And what I mean by that is, there are two guards assigned to take Billup's virginity once he consents. And it's one woman and one man, which I thought was really neat. Like they could have just gone with the woman. But no, it's, it's, it's a man and a woman. And on top of that, while Billups has a plot contrived reason for not wanting to have sex, he's pretty clear about his disinterest and lack of a sexual attraction, which, you know, falls somewhere on the A spectrum as well. So I thought that was pretty neat. Now, ultimately, it turns out that his mother has just been tricking him to try and, like, like she fakes her own death and to make him finally be like, okay, I'm gonna lose my virginity and take my place on the throne. Um, Tendi finds out because Rutherford also died in the fake death and she goes to find his cybernetic implant and discovers him just eating. And yeah, so that whole thing is uncovered and, you know, they all go back to the Cerritos. It's it's a nice episode. It's a cute episode. I liked it a lot. Closing thoughts. As I said, this was like pretty short review this time because I just need to get it out and I am struggling with getting things done. But I really liked this episode. It was a lot of fun. It probably would have gone on my top 55 Star Trek episodes if it had been released before I made my top 55 Star Trek episodes. And yeah, I mean, just an all-around fun episode. I also wonder if the uh, collection of evil computers that we see at the end at the Daystrom Institute, if that's going to be perhaps a season finale setup thing? That could be interesting. Uh, but yeah, I liked it. I'm looking forward to next week's episode, this week's episode even. So until then, live long and prosper. <laughs>